boys and girls, and welcome to Grandma Teaches Story Time. I'm Mrs. Claus, and I'll be reading your story today. I'm reading How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. Christmas Day, Mrs. down in Whoville likes Christmas a lot, but the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please, don't ask why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be, perhaps, that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the food, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm, lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers, nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow, he knew. All the new girls and boys would wait bright and early. They'd rush for their toys, and then, oh, the noise. Oh, the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated. The noise, 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 noise. Then the dudes, young and old, would sit down to a feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast. And they'd feast, 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 feast. They would feast on his pudding and rare who was sweet which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they do something he liked least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand, and the who's would start singing. They'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this new Christmas thing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do, the Grinch laughed in his throat. And he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled and clucked with a great grinchy trick. With his coat and his hat, I look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around. But since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No. The Grinch simply said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max. And he took some red thread, and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh as he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, get up! And the sleigh started down toward the home toward the hoos, lay a snooze in their town. All their windows were dark, quiet snow for the air. All the hoos were all dreaming sweet dreams without care when he came to the first little house on the square. This is stop number one, the old Grinchy Claus hit, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his kit. Then he slid down the chimney a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, then he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue where the little hoo stockings all hung in a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first thing to go. Then he fluttered and slumped with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room, and he took every present. 
hotlines and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn and plums, and stuffed in a bag for the Grinch very nimbly, stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the who sheet. He took the who pudding. He took the roast beef. He cleaned out that icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of who hash. Then he stuffed all the food at the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed a tree and he started to shove. When he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove, he turned around fast and he saw a small who, little Cindy Lou who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter, who had got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Sandy Fly, why, why are you taking my Christmas tree? Why? But you know, that old Grinch was the smartest or slick. He thought up a line and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there. Then I'll bring it back here. And he did pull the child, and he patted her head, and he got her a drink, and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuck the tree up. Then the last thing he took was a log for the fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one stick of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other who's houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other who's mouses. It was quarter past dawn, all the who's still abed, all the who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrapping, the tags and the tinsel, the trimming, the packing. 3,000 feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet. He rode with his load to the tree top to dump it. Poo poo to the hoos, he was plentifully humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a minute or two. Then the hoos down who will, will all cry, boo hoo. That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his chin to his ear, and he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to blow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, this sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry. Very. He stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes and he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every Who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet, ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more.
And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. And he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. The Grinch carved the rose key. Well, I hope you enjoyed the story today, boys and girls. And I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Stay safe. Bye.